morning, everybody. I toast to you and all you do. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I decided in trying to get this video set up, the next time I go get new glasses, I gotta get them with special whatever on them so that they don't have glare, because this is crazy. Like, there's so much glare on my glasses. Anyway, so, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I hope that you enjoyed your midwinter. I know that the groundhog uh, did not see its shadow from what I believe I saw in the news. And it was really entertaining because I had to have an entire discussion with some children, one of which was mine, it was somebody else's. Anyways, I had a, just a whole discussion with some children about how, you know, here where we live, it was very, very sunny. It was, it's been unseasonably warm lately, which in legend says that the goddess of winter is out collecting firewood for the remainder of winter. So we went outside, we were like, do you see your shadow? <laughs> it was the whole thing. So, uh, I, you know, it's really dependent on where you live, on how the weather is going to work itself out. So, but with that whole discussion, it just was very, it was one of those moments when you get to really connect with the energy of the earth that you live on and the place in which you live. And it's a reminder that it is so important to connect with the actual ground that you live in, with where the sun comes up where you are, with how the stars look, with what weather is going on near you, and really be connected with that. I love telling the time by the sun. And, uh, you know, over many, many years, now I'm getting close to 40, I can do a pretty good job to the point where I surprise most people. They're like, what time is it? And I'm like, mm, and I look up, okay, it's about this time. So that it's just one of those ways to connect with the land where you are and be present in that energy. And with that being said, I also want to take a minute to talk about midwinter or in bulk uh, or let's see, do I have other names on my paper? I don't. I just left it at midwinter anyways so midwinter is when we start to see the first signs of spring it is when the energy shifts from the goddess retreating and really being you know the mother earth retreating and being focused on internal healing and internal growth and now the shift is more towards blossoming that growth, really bringing that growth that you've had internally out into the world. And it's really funny because I talk to people about setting New Year's resolutions and they're like, I hate doing this or I'm not doing a good job. And yes, it's the beginning of the year, right? As winter starts is a good time to really say, okay, here are the things that I've learned. Here are the things that I want to accomplish. And then by the time you get to now, and then the spring equinox, is when we really say, okay, these are the actual goals that I'm going to set. These are the things that I'm actually going to do. This is the energy I'm going to manifest and bring to the surface, which is really counterproductive to the Gregorian calendar set your New Year's resolution on the first of the year. Because by February, most people have not done their diet or done their exercise or signed up for whatever, or gone to the class or, you know, met with the people, whatever it is was your goal. You haven't done that and come to February and you're like, oh, well, shucks, never mind. And we kind of defeat ourselves and not being connected to the energy that is present. I also see a lot of people right now who, like in the fall, have this increase in manic energy and that can manifest its way itself in many ways so you'll see people who are like i need to get organized i need to start cleaning um my sister organized so much stuff at the store it was hilarious i was like did you did you do this she's like yeah i did i organized all these things i made all these boxes they're all labeled they look great it's amazing but it was just you know manifesting that energy of like i have to do something i have to manifest something and when we find we are not connected with this energy or we are not aware or we are dismissive of this energy, you can see it manifest in some people very negatively. Um, they might have, you know, out of control mania. They might get depressed. They might uh, really withdraw because they can't, they're, they don't know how to manifest what it is that they want, so they just turn inward and then they just really withdraw completely and it's like that opposite effect. Uh, 
And then you'll see other people who go out and make like extreme choices and they're like, I'm gonna go buy a Lamborghini and sell my house and cut all my hair off and do these crazy things because they're, they don't know how to deal with this energy and it just works its way into either exploding or imploding. And as we sit and we relax and we take time to be present with the energy around us, when you realize what time the sun is rising every day, and I'm not saying you have to get up every morning, but when you realize like where the sun is when you wake up and how long, you know, or where it is when it's setting in the evening and you see where the moon is and you see I've got crocuses coming up. I thought they were daffodils, but now I'm pretty sure they're crocuses. But I have my first flowers coming up in the garden, which is very exciting. But I'm like, it's going to snow. They stop. <laughs> I hope that they survive. But you see these energies manifesting. You see this energy wanting to come to the surface and if we don't pay attention to it and we don't allow it to manifest itself in healthy ways and in productive ways then it can turn to that destructive nature and in correlation with where the earth is in the rotation and the energy that we're having right now we also have the universe kind of saying the same thing oh and as i said that i just had this whole thing about people in the southern hemisphere if you look at the energies that are present at in bulk and at um let's see so it's it would be summer there so this would be uh the early harvest so you have that early harvest and you also have this midwinter but both energies are about initiating this manifesting energy so in this, where it's winter time here, in the Northern Hemisphere, we are manifesting new goals, new beginnings, fresh starts, getting things started. And on the Southern Hemisphere, they are manifesting the harvest in which they planted in their winter time. So it might not seem so connected, but it is. It's just like the energy at High Spring and Samhain or Halloween, the last harvest. These energies are the same but opposite each other. The veil is just as thin at both places. We just feel it slightly differently because it's the opposite ends of these same spectrums. And it's the same with the northern and southern hemisphere. So all of this manifesting energy is still present. It's just in a different state of being, um, which is, when you think about water, it's the same water that we freeze, that we drink, you know, that's liquid, and then that turns to steam. It's all the same water. Just like it's all the same water that we've drank for thousands of years. It's all the same energy. It's all the same rotating, cycling, present energy that is ever connected. And both, so we, you always have both sides. But the universe is also calling to that change um, with where we are at present with the North Node and with Pluto entering Aquarius and, and Saturn moving um, into uh, Pisces. So we had these two big shifts that happened last year and this year because the thing with Pluto just happened. But we just had these two big shifts and then we have the North Node. We are also going to have this solar eclipse coming up in April and you can, you will be able to see it in the Northern Hemisphere, well, and the Southern, you'll be able to, the line, you know, but it'll be like from the very east side of Australia up in like a diagonal line that's going to go all the way up past New York and into Greenland like and that's going to be the where we see the full of the eclipse now just because you can't see it doesn't mean we're not going to feel this energy and this eclipse happens while Kryon Chiron is com exact conjunct to the north node and this is a great moment of healing of change of you know, we have to allow the things in our past to heal and to heal in a way that we're taking those lessons and we're learning from them and we're actually implementing those lessons into our future and creating this better foundation and, and stepping forward into this emotional and spiritual enlightenment, evolution, change, growth, whatever word you want to put there. We have, I see a lot of astrologers or other people on YouTube that they have a lot of words to put there, but this is all the same thing. We're talking about growth on, on a massive level. And the last time the stars aligned like this was in 1776. And that's crazy. 
to think about if you look throughout history all around the world and what was happening in 1776 it was quite a time of revolutions and revelations and change and you know this movement from top down one person is in charge to a more democratic like we need and now we're ready for the next step of that uh, which takes us back to this communal cohesive locally based yet always connected i think that's one of the disconnects that we end up having between oh well, we need to go back to local but we can't get rid of that we're global no you can have both things both things can be true at the same time it's not like you can't have one without the other these things can both be true at the same time we can be focused on our local communities and putting out what is best for our community and taking care of the earth we live on and doing what you know, really supports the kids in our community, the old people in our community, just everybody. Like this is what's best for our community and still connecting with the communities around us and all around the world, sharing knowledge, sharing growth, sharing stories, just being present, just listening, just participating. And, you know, if you look into the fundamentals of society and life and structure and people and community, all those things, it doesn't matter what religion or what place you live or what color your skin is or what your culture or your sexual orientation or any anything. All of those things always come back to the same kind of principles. And if we just focused on these kind of principles and made these changes in our local communities, just in ourselves, I, mean, I say this a lot, when we make these changes in ourselves, we then see these in our community and we see these in our states and our our everything and then it just grows outward from there and that is the change that's being called on it is also the change that is being that is happening from the earth underneath our feet you know the first flowers are sprouting the energy that was stored from last year and has changed and grown and germinated and become whatever it is now is coming back we have the robins are already coming back and it's funny because they're migrating back through and it's not we have a robin that lives at my house every year after year and it's not that one yet so we just watch as the robins migrate and come and hang out and then leave like oh that's that's not Derek that's not our bird our you know we just it's entertaining so we see these changes happening on the earth we feel these changes happening from the inside and the universe is really calling to these changes and with Pluto entering Aquarius, and then the sun and moon are also in Aquarius right now, and Uranus is square to the sun and moon, and in a very extended trine, like very extended through association trine with Pluto, we have this really strong Aquarian energy, which as I mentioned before in the last video, is very much about washing away what is old, getting rid of things that we don't need, removing the filth from like ourselves, our life, our world, everything around us, and really stepping forward in a, it's hard to put a word here without adding religious connotation or saying some moral higher authority, but in reality, it really is stepping forward with that mor morality and saying, okay, this is what's best for me, my family, my community, my, my home, my earth, everything and therefore that is what's best for everybody and doing that with open eyes seeing the world with the truth i mean iris has been such a strong energy being conjunct with the north node for so long and really bringing in this idea that we need to see the world with truth we cannot continue to put on rose colored glasses and see things superficially and, and try to just continuously fix the symptoms, we have to actually treat the problem. We have to go back to the root, pro you know, what is the root cause of this? And the root cause of this is that we have moved away from having integrity and, you know, valuing, I mean, almost valuing ourselves and saying this is really what's right for me and not in a superficial and selfish way, but in a way like, that you are that you really feel good about I and mean, we live in this world where we're constantly on our phones i mean you're watching me here now i spend a lot of time on youtube we really spend a lot of time in this world of technology and 
sometimes it is hard to believe when we see the things that we're seeing that we're not seeing a complete reality. You hear the sad, sad stories of all of these influencers who then commit horrible acts against themselves because what they show on the screen is not the truth. Uh, sometimes when I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't make a video because my kids are sick or this is happening, I think it's important to share those moments. And of course, I don't share every moment because it's none of your business. And, you know, you wouldn't want to share every moment with me. That's just how that is. But at the same time, you have to realize that when you see another person, especially on the screen or some famous person or something, you're only seeing what they want you to see. You're not seeing the whole picture. You can't compare yourself to that. You can't say, oh, that's what I need to be. And that is exactly why Iris came in and put the apple on the table and said, I'm calling all of you out. You're sitting here arguing about who is the most beautiful, who is the fairest of them all. When in real life, it has nothing to do with what, like, let's step up here. Let's really look at the problem. Let's look at what's happening. Our children are not getting the... Any, I mean, they're just not getting what they need in order to grow up to be healthy, productive, amazing people that they could be. And we have really stepped away from this teaching our kids values and morals and good things and to value themselves and to value who they are and how that is a beautiful thing and can be a part of the world. And we just encourage this. Every, everybody gives in to the, I don't want my kid to be the only one without a cell phone. Well, I'm the only one. I got three kids. One of them is in first grade, and okay, so most of those kids don't have their own cell phone, but my other two, all of the kids in their class have their own cell phone. Not one of them has, I mean, I get texts, because my kids don't have their own cell phone, they just use mine, and I get texts at like 10 o'clock at night. I woke up the other day to 81 text messages, because these kids are just, doo -doo 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 -doo. that's all they do, is they sit on their phone, and that, and that was a Sunday night. I'm like, your parents went to bed because they got to go to work in the morning and, and these kids just sat up all night. And I get it. I get it. I remember being a teenager. I told my daughter that. I said, I remember being your age and all you want to do is talk to your friends all the time, hang out with your friends, be with your friends, you know, be a part of this thing. But while you're doing that, you also have to be aware that you as an individual have value and that it is that individual that you bring to the table that it, that's where that value, like, that's what makes the table fun to sit at. That's what makes everything amazing. And if you're not encouraging that in your children and you're just allowing them to sit on some screen all the time, what are they learning? <laughs> and what crazy things that they have access to. We don't even begin to understand what our kids are getting into and unless you're sitting over their shoulder. I mean, my kids have very limited access to the internet and still I catch catch. My older one, watching shorts on YouTube or getting TikToks from her friend or she'd be live chatting with one of her friends and then they're watching TikTok videos. I'm like, well, what are you guys doing? You can't sit up here and do this. You gotta come down and be with people. You can still be on the phone, but you're gonna need to be in an area where we can monitor what's going on because that's not appropriate. You can't be, I just, I can't have that. I'm not going, and I tell my daughter, your life is more important than a cell phone. Your life is more important than being cool. Your life is more important than any of the excuses that you could ever tell me. And when your friends are like, oh, that's so bad, whatever, you just tell them that your mom is not a... I said, you tell them that your mom is the B word and that she won't let you have a cell phone. Because there's always going to be kids that their parents have certain rules and this is a rule that I have. And I'm sorry, but I value your life more than I value your coolness right this second at school. Because... That's really not going to matter in 10 years, five years. Like, it just really isn't. So I guess there's my <laughs> unexpected. <sighs> I have been really called lately by Iris and this energy of chaos and this energy of change to say things. And sometimes it's hard to make videos because I don't want to say the things that I'm being called to say because... You just sometimes just don't want to be that person. <laughs> and I guess this is a big thing, this, this kids and cell phone and having accountability and teaching these morals. And then also having accountability as adults. 
how much time do you spend watching shorts? My husband and I were just talking last night about how easy it is to become so in in it with the shorts and that it and then you can't watch long videos. And I watch my statistics. I see where the drop off happens. It happens fairly quickly and it's I don't think I mean I'm sure it's because there are those who are like I can't watch this whole video. But some of that is because we don't have the attention span to sit through a longer video. And that's that's hard. So I, you know, I encourage you to sit down and watch two, three hour podcasts. Just listen to them in the background. Don't pick the shorts, pick something longer. And I'm not just doing that because I make longer videos. I make longer videos because I sit down to talk and then the universe is like, this is what you need to tell the world. And then I end up on rants like I just did. Really, I came here to talk about the full moon or the uh, dark moon and midwinter because this is where we are. But clearly we need to manifest this change. It, it's happening. And the energies are calling to all of us. And as I said, you see people who are not accepting of that change. And things can be chaotic for them. Uh, they can be very self-destructive. They can be mean because they see that you're making changes. And when you're making changes and someone else is not, there's like a, it, it creates a friction. And if someone is in a really unhealthy place and all of the people around them are healing and growing and being better and they're just not ready to do that they're going to create friction because then they can say it's not me it's them and this is that moment where the universe says, like it's time to wake up from that we are in this like cocoon of realization and you know, awakening that says, hey, it is time, it's time to see this. It's time to see this reality. See the places that you're not healing. See the places where you're holding on to things. See the places where you really need to see that change. It's funny because in my shorts, it, I routinely get the one from Jordan Peterson and he asks that question where he says, what am I doing every day that is stupid? And that seems really harsh. And the first time I heard it, because I have some like, I grew up, being told that that word is a bad word which is kind of crazy the, the the emotional attachment we put on words is insane but what are we doing every day that is stupid so the first time i heard that it was very it was jarring i was like oh mm, that's not a good question but now as i've thought about it more and i actually listened to his whole thing on that uh it is, it, that is what we need to do. Like you need to stop and look at your life and say, what am I doing that isn't helping me? What am I doing that is actually disruptive? Where am I failing at making growth and change? And you know, how am I not using my life, my time and all of these things productively? That is the purpose of the life that we live is to go out and experience and to do things and to make changes. Change is the only constant. So. What is it that you're stagnant in? And that normally is what answers the question of what stupid thing am I doing every day? And the other half of that, because there is not just one side to anything, but the other half of that is what do I take for granted and what do I need to show more gratitude for? I actually this morning decided while I was doing laundry, because I hate doing laundry for no reason, but our washing machine was broken for a while and my husband was sick, so it took a minute to get everything fixed. So we got pretty backed up on laundry. And I was like, dang kid, you got a lot of clothes. <laughs> There's just like more clothes out everywhere. Anyways, I just told myself this morning, I said, you know, for a while I was trying to accept this mantra that was like, I love laundry. I love laundry. I now would just say that to myself every time I was doing the laundry and it was not working. <laughs> it's not working. This was a counterproductive mantra because it became like a facetious thing in my brain, which it was counterproductive. So instead, I just looked at the laundry today and said, you know what? I'm really grateful that my washing machine is fixed right now. I'm really grateful that I'm able to wash this laundry. And suddenly my clothes are way cleaner. Like they're soft. And like clearly the washing machine was more broken than I thought it was for longer than, you know, the mate. Like there was a decline in its productivity. <laughs> but we got to... You know, so I just said to myself, I'm going to just be grateful. Like, I am grateful for this. And then I finished up doing the laundry. It went pretty quickly and it was fine. And as I walked away from it, I said, you know, I really do just need to show more gratitude in my life for the small things that are amazing. And, you know, that's, 
a part of making that change. That's a part of healing. That's a part of stepping forward. I realize I have a lot of emotional attachment to the laundry, like from childhood trauma. <laughs> And it is just a crazy thing to be like, wow, what what a weird thing to like have childhood trauma about. And it, it is the dirty laundry. It's crazy. So, but these epiphanies are happening to everyone. They're happening everywhere. This is the universe is calling to it. The energy of Aquarius is calling to it. And, you know, we cannot forget what truly the energy of Aquarius is because it is the great flood. And no matter what culture you look at all around the world, all throughout history, from Peru to ancient Egypt to Chinese culture, like everywhere, they have myths of a great flood that literally washes away all the bad people and only the righteous who were warned by the gods are left there. And I think because in the myths, it's always like one person who then repopulate. Like that's okay. But it's not just one person who was saved. It wasn't like Noah and his wives and the two of every animal and that's it and that's all that lived. There were Noahs all around because there are those people who stopped and looked and were already enlightened and awakened enough to be like, whoa, I got to remove myself from this situation. I have to step back and go somewhere else and this, this is going to eat itself alive. And you see that happening in cultures over and over again. You see this happening all around the world. We see this happening right now. I feel like if you look at places in the world that they don't want to talk about on the news all the time, but you see these kind of destructive, implosive problems happening where they are in, you know, such states of civil war or whatever, you know, oh, just crazy things happening. But this is all part of that transformation. This is all part of like that being called out. And if you are not willing to pack up and, and say, I'm going to take my morals and my high ground and I'm going to do that. I'm going to move to high ground. I can't sit here and be a part of the destruction that is happening all around us. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. Like I saw this terrifying map the other day and the lady was like, here are the places that are at war with each other. And she just started listing off countries like Taiwan and China and the U.S. and this and blah, blah, blah. And, and almost the whole map changed colors. And if you were to compare that to like World War One or World War Two or like other times in our history, it does not even compare. Like we're all red, like people are like, oh, we're headed to World War Three. It is already, it's already happening. It just hasn't been like pick two sides. It's pick lots of sides. You could pick a thousand sides. Sometimes you're on this side and sometimes you're on that side. And, you know, everybody's got to pick sides and all the different wars. And then all the, it's, so you can't like, here's the line. <laughs> uh, and some of the world wars aren't even wars of like wars of nation. These are cultural wars. These are personal wars. These are, we have this rise in horrible behaviors that are being accepted I, it's, it's, it's just it's crazy to me what's happening and but this is this Aquarius energy is calling to that this Aquarius energy is like open your eyes and see this because if you're not someone that sees this and you just want to sit in that darkness Uranus is calling to this too but if you just want to sit in that darkness then you're going to be washed away in the flood. You're going to be left to nothing and be in this place. I mean, just washed away. It's just, that's it. And those who can climb up higher and sit atop the mountain or build their bow or their rat, whatever, and really move their, themselves away from this are, are like, they are going to be saved. It's just a hard thing to say. But it's you're saving yourself. And it's it doesn't have to be like Noah and seeing, you know, the the sign from God and hearing the voices and whatever. It's not like that. I mean it is though, because the signs are all around us. The signs are like clear and in your face. I was listening to Tucker Carlson and uh 
why I cannot Russell Brand in their interview and he, he Russell Brand was talking about we are at a state where we have to make this change and he's talking about governments and you know this top-down authority but now we really need to get back to this communal like what is good for the individual and what is good for our local communities but it was just crazy watching because it was like here these two people who are not seeing it in the universe but they're seeing it like logically and this is what is being called like all across the spectrum people are seeing this and if you're not willing to see it it's time to see it i don't know what else to say this eclipse that's coming up i think will be very enlightening for a lot of people i think it'll be very shocking for a lot of people especially those who have not already decided to start making these changes so if you find that this energy that we're having right now and the energy that's coming up in April and over the next month, if you find that you are really disturbed by it, you know, it's just really upsetting to yourself, your state of being, if you find yourself to be really stressed out or pulled in a lot of directions or, you know, really relying on your coping mechanisms in order to function, these are the things that are being called out to you and you need to sit down you need to journal it you need to write it you need to say it you need to speak it you need to look at it you need to really be like okay it's time to face this it is time to face all of my issues my childhood traumas my relationship issues my self value whatever it is it is time to make that change so Thanks for sticking around if you're still here. I really appreciate it. Let's talk about the full moon chart and what is happening. As you see, everything is on the one side and everything is direct. This is another part of that puzzle that says it is time to move forward. It is time to make change. It is time to heal and to really manifest these goals. Uh, the big aspects that we have going on is that Venus, Mars, Pluto, and Mercury are all conjunct. And they are really creating this powerful, ambitious, forward-moving energy that like calls on your heart, but also your warrior. So it's like the heart and the mind and the warrior and all of it. Like let's, as a whole complete person, it is time to step forward. And it is really calling on you to allow your passions to encourage you and to really manifest and start manifesting your dreams. Like it is time to step forward. No matter how scary it is, and we're looking around like, oh my God, the whole world is in rubble. Well, all you can do is the next right thing. All you can do is take that next step. And the energies are calling to you to like, take that next step, climb up these stairs, move forward, grow, learn, and you're gonna make it through this. And this conjunction is square with Jupiter, which normally when we talk about squares, they're kind of like stressful. However, when we have Jupiter in a square, because Jupiter is such an expanding energy, this square, if anything, it might say, okay, hey, don't get too big of a head and don't step too far forward. But it is really calling on you to harness your impulses. Don't step too far forward, like I said, and take that initiative to start something new. Really make that happen. Let the universe guide you. All of the details are there. You can get this done. This You can do this. And allow that, allow this energy to manifest got this uh that conjunction is also sextile to neptune which is really increasing the sensual desire this wanting to connect this seeing things from like this greater perspective like oh okay maybe i do connect with these people or this idea or this philosophy and i can make these connections and i can be a part of this and i can really rely on the people around me to help me manifest my goals and the energy around me to manifest my goals um, there's this creative romantic aspect that comes into it. Neptune really enhances the energy of Venus. And it is just like manifest, like manifest with love and manifest with this new higher insight. Because you can, again, you can do this. This is what the energies are saying. 
even though we have this turmoil, turmulous things happening, which we're talking about now with Mercury and the sun and the moon and the Aquarius energy, which is really calling us to go really deep and really call it out and really put it forward and wash away these old things. And Uranus comes in kind of disruptively. The energy of Uranus is like, get her done right now. Like if you're not gonna get her done, I'm gonna get her done. We're gonna bring in this flood. We're gonna bring in the volcanoes, the earthquakes, the floods, you know, it's coming. The flow of energy is coming forward and whether you're ready for it or not, it is time for that. So you're gonna find unexpected changes. You're gonna find this need to really wanna step out and be independent. And embrace that step into that and allow these changes to happen grow allow the growth to happen um, we have mm, so everything's pretty interconnected so we have Saturn sextile with Jupiter which gives us a really optimistic look but like a realistic logical these are the best steps that you need to take forward these are the things that are going to help you move into this new place. And allow these personal transformations, this emer you know, emotional maturity to really happen and allow this growth. So there's, you know, the four big things, one of which we already talked about with this Uranus igniting change. And regardless if you're ready for it or not, this is happening. And we have an amazing opportunity to heal and the universe right now is saying there are people around you who are there to listen there are people who are like-minded who are here to connect with you who can help you heal who can help you step forward and just do do what you need to do and and it, it's 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 happening it's time to make these changes um Venus is really interconnected right now. And so it's really calling out your passions and your love and your need for this connection. But those passions and loves and love and connections are going to help you heal. They're gonna help you see that you have the resources that you need, that you have all of the knowledge and wisdom and things that you need in order to heal. The answers are there. The, the solution is right in front of you. You know, let people help you and you you will succeed again it is just time to make those changes and if you allow them to come to you and you allow all of this energy to flow and you allow the healing to happen and you see the truth sometimes you're like well i'm not healing and this isn't happening for me so you must be wrong about the whole thing well did you stop to look at what is causing the problem or are you just looking for quick solutions to fix the symptoms trauma runs deep and many of us have a lot of trauma. And I was just talking the other day, of, I, was, I was watching this research study and the doctors were talking about, we have a lot more people now who have so much trauma that it's causing different emotional disorders than it used to have, you know, 40 years ago. Or 40 years ago, it would be like all over the spectrum. Now we can see that most of these are like personality disorders that are based off childhood trauma or some kind of life trauma. And I was like, well, okay, people now have it so much easier than our ancestors had it when, you know, half your siblings died and you had to start working at 12 and you couldn't go to school and you couldn't do all of these things. And in our discussion, it was, you know, back then, everybody's sisters died or you know someone's like oh my brother died oh my sister died okay well there's you know, these were normal occurrences they all came to school they all talked about them they were all like oh we all have to we're 12 so now we work on the farm instead of go to school oh you know you get to go to school that's amazing bring me a book whatever they were doing but they were all doing it together and they were all doing it like you know this just sucks for everybody we all have to go to work it's just just reality now in our suffering there is so much hush and so much like shh, don't talk about it the victims are shamed it is people are made to suffer in silence and then when they 
act out in some way and then they're like oh well i acted out because i have this trauma then they're like further ashamed because like oh how does your trauma make it okay for you to act out well i have this trauma i don't know how to act and when we don't teach children how to act and then we're giving them cell phones and you see the circle that we're coming back to it is time to get out of that circle it is time to really see okay here are my traumas here are the things that i need to heal from here are the people who can help me heal. Here are the people I need to let go of because they're not helping me heal. And how can I connect and heal and step forward? And those, this is really being called on you. Um, this transformation, this time to heal, this embrace our honest selves, create a better world, you know, I'm just reading all of my little notes. It just says this over and over again on all the pages. Like as I was working on it, I was like, I'm gonna feel like a broken record because I feel like a broken record from all of the videos before because the universe is saying the same thing. This is a really big push. Uh, we are really, over the last six months, have been really called, really called to make these changes, you know, to dive deep, to have this awareness, to trust ourselves, to trust the people around us, to grow and heal and create this better world. And, you know, I don't think that we have to have a great flood that literally washes away half the earth because that would suck. Like there's, you know, we don't have to have an asteroid hit the earth. We don't have to have some major catastrophe I feel like the catastrophe is already happening. If you just turn on the TV and you find something, the news, <laughs> reality TV, I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's just crazy to me to see what's happening. And it, it's time to make that change. This is the catastrophe. What we see out going on is a catastrophe. It is time to make that change. It is time to step up. The universe is calling, the earth is calling, society is calling. I imagine on the inside, just about every person that I talk to is having some crisis of self and or some great healing moment. Like the crisis doesn't have to be negative. I mean, it, but they're just having some grand epiphany. Like, oh, they're having those moments of growth. And the people who are not... <clears throat> are, like I said, having these other issues of, you know, uncontrolled emotional implosions or explosions, explosions, yeah. So, as we approach this dark moon and we approach this energy that's happening, oh, I don't think I said it, it's happening on February 9th. If we, if we approach this with the real realism and you know, logical truth and the goal of healing and really becoming better individuals and allowing this spiritual and emotional growth, evolution, transformation, amazingness <laughs> to happen, then we are going to see this change globally. We are going to see things change. We are going to see that more and more people are stepping up and and unless people are being washed away by like the horribleness that's going on all around us. Uh, now I could get into a whole nother rant about like opioids and pharmaceutical drugs and food that we're eating. Good God, but I'm not going to. It's already a 45 minute video. So thank you so much for sticking around. I really appreciate all of the people who stay to the end. I am very appreciative of all of the subscribers I have. I'm. I know I don't have a lot, but it's still amazing to me. And I, I'm thankful for all of these changes that are happening. Some of them have been harder than others. Some realizations are harder to swallow than others. Just that's how it is. Uh, but I am very thankful that the universe is helping us to make this transition. And I hope that we can make it globally. And I hope we can do it faster and with less destruction than has been needed in times past. So with that said, I just wanted to send another toast to all of you and lots of blessings. And even though this is a difficult time, it, it's going to be okay. And we are going to make this through this. And the energy and the wisdom and the knowledge and the support is all there. Just be open and available to it. 
Many blessings.